I've been meaning to make this video for a long time now, but now is a great time to present you with 10 amazing Switch eShop games that I have bought and played over the past year. Maybe there's a game that you missed, or you're looking for a certain game to play. Maybe you're sick of hearing about the same games over and over from other YouTube channels. Well, you've come to the right place. Here are 10 great Switch eShop games that you might have missed in 2018. First, let's start with Slay Away Camp, Butcher's Cut. In this game, you play as a killer. You can only slide in one direction, and if you run into an NPC, you kill them. The goal is to kill all the NPC on the stage and make it to the exit space, but in deeper parts of the game, it can be more tricker than it appears. There are hazards like SWAT men, cats, water, fire and more. You can even customize your killer. There are over 100 different levels to play, and it's a great value nowadays. You can even choose to turn off the gore, but I have yet to see what that's like. Many people see that it's trying to imitate Friday the 13th, and as a matter of fact, the studio did later score the rights to Friday the 13th to give us Friday the 13th. Killer Puzzle the graphics are more detailed than the previous game, and it's a more linear style game than the other. Rather than customizing your character, you can just change Jason's weapon to one of various different objects, such as a ski pole, a sword, a fire poker, brass knuckles, and more. The exit panel in the previous game is now one final victim that appears after you kill all the other victims in the level. Like Slay Away Camp, you can also turn off the gore. This is a fun game, but I recommend playing Slay Away Camp first before considering this one. If either of these games are too violent for you, there's always Kongo Master Party. Kongo Master Party is a pretty unique game. The goal of this game is to grow your Kongo line until you have enough of each of the four types of dancers. Classy dancers, sexy dancers, nerdy dancers and cool dancers. You have a momentum meter that you would like to keep up. Once you have no more momentum, the game is over. You get more people in your conga line by moving around them close enough for a period of time. If you attract a pig to join your conga line, you lose momentum. There are also various characters to unlock and play as, each of them have different attributes in speed, turning, attractiveness, and noticeability. I'm playing this obese man here. He's slow and takes a long time to attract new dancers, but he turns well and can attract dancers from pretty far out. There is also Amiibo compatibility. Amiibos however, unlock different accessories for particular characters that you have already unlocked. So this fatty wears a sombrero for his accessory. But if you think that game is silly, there is one that is even sillier. Pool Panic is a popular game, but it's one that is very underrated. You play as a cue ball in your play stages where you try to knock other balls inside of holes. There are many different levels to explore and many ways that the game tries to make you laugh. The art style is really well done and for $15, this game has many different stages and content. Master Chef Brigade was a game I didn't really enjoy all that much, as it was short and repetitive, and Adult Swim Games charged $20 for it. Honestly, I wish I paid that much for this game instead. I paid 40 bucks, however, for this next game, titled Armello. Armello is another unique title. It combines elements of board game, car game, and RPG to make for a long multiplayer session that lasts a couple of hours long each. The king of Armello is sick, and the goal of the game is to get enough strength to kill him find enough crystals to heal him, earn enough rot to take over the kingdom, or let the king die and take over as king with enough political points. Four players take turns moving around the board to complete personal quests in order to obtain items. Players can also battle one another with items that they have in addition to cards that they can play to hope to play to their favor. It's a very complicated game, but it can also be very enjoyable. It's been a long time since I've been able to find a group of players online to play with, but you can also play local games and games with computer players, too. If you are looking for something short and simple, but still fun, there is Frame Collection. Frame Collection is a double pack of puzzle games. You rearrange the panels to play out a series of events. You are helping this character who is trying to run from the cops. 
you rearrange the panels so that the character can evade getting caught or running into a dead end. It is also rather innovative with all the possible outcomes in each stage. At times, it can be tricky, but it shouldn't take long to find out what to do on each level. I learned about this game on Metal Jesus Rock's channel, and I feel that this is one that slipped under the radar. Another game that slipped under the radar, we got Forgotten Man. Forgotten Man is a cinematic 2D game that reminds me of Dusk, an Elysium tale with an animation style that tries to look more epic than anything. This is a puzzle platform game that takes place in a steampunk world called The Forgotten Lands, a parallel universe where forgotten objects come to life and hope to one day go back to the real world to be remembered once more. Kicking definitely won't help. The reverser at the watchtower is broken. You can't fix the flow from here. Oh, I'll never go home now. I'll never again feel my owner's feet. Never again will go hiking or climbing or, or running or... I'm on my way to restore Anima to the workshop. You are? Wonderful! We might actually get to go home! I miss feet most of all. What do you miss most from the human world, Enforcer? You play as Anne, an Enforcer that you raise the Forgotten Land, and the plot is to stop a revolt that would prevent Anne and her master from going back to the human world. Story is a large emphasis in this game, and it is amusing listening to dialogue and looking for secrets. One secret gem I also happen to find cannot be found on the English eShop. It's available on the Japanese eShop only for the time being. It's called Magic Scroll Tactics. This is a strategy RPG that is similar to Steam World Heist, but rather takes gameplay mechanics from RPGs like Fire Emblem. You play as a summoner named Nash, and the plot is to stop a group of magi from resurrecting an evil hag that would otherwise take over the world. You have five other characters in your party, whom I assume are procedurally generated at the start of the game. They level up, and can learn new abilities from the skill tree. This is a well-crafted game, and if you can't wait for it any longer, it's available on the Japan eShop and will play in English. Boom Ball, Boost Edition. This is a 3D puzzle game where you are to hit the ball at a series of blocky structures. You can either use the Joy-Con and wave them around in order to hit incoming balls, or use the touchscreen to swipe at them. Boom Ball is one of those Kinect games back in the day. If you opt to use the touchscreen, you better be prepared for those balls to come out at you. Does it look like a shovelware game? Absolutely, but it doesn't mean you might not have fun with it. Last but not least, we have Hand of Fate 2. I played the first Hand of Fate game on Xbox One. Both these games involve moving a marker across a series of cards. When you go to a card, you flip it over and an event appears, either a mini-game, a decision-making event, a shop, or even a battle. The battles are similar to Batman Arkham battles where you attack foes, counter-attacks, and use abilities to take thugs out. In Hand of Fate 2, the argument to each chapter in gameplay is a little more complex. All in all, it's a really fun and challenging single-player game that can really bring you to the edge of your seat. 2018 was a great year for indie titles on Switch, and this just goes to show that Nintendo doesn't have to curate shit. If we got a curated eShop, it would be harder for games like these to have been discovered. 2019 could be another great year for indie titles. What are some other eShop games that you recommend? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below.